if you want to get into the whittling hobby this holiday season, um, this is what we're how we're going to structure this video. So it's really geared towards people who are who have you know either just getting into the hobby or thinking about it. Think no more. Um, here's how you do it. So essentially, uh, this is a piece of basswood. You can pick basswood up at um, you know a lot of different a lot of different sources. Just grab yourself a, a piece at one of the uh, hobby supply stores. They're they're there. This particular one, as you can see, I cut it down. It's an inch and a half. I think sometimes they do come in two inch. Uh, blocks, but um, it, which is fine. You can definitely use a two-inch block for this, but um, it's a little more difficult. If you're, you know, if you're just starting out, get something that you can hold. Um, so uh, what I did here was just cut a piece of basswood square. So it's an inch and a half square, um, and and that's it. We're going to whittle the piece in the first four inches. So we have an inch and a half and four inches, and I've marked certain lines on here that I'm going to talk about briefly, and we'll flip it over for that. So here are our lines, and I know a lot of people. The reason I do this, I typically don't put a lot of measurements in my whittles, but um, since again this is structured for people who are starting out and really haven't taken uh, much time, much, much, uh, you know, they haven't taken a knife to wood all that often. So this is exactly who I'm hoping to entice into the hobby by uh, with this type of video. Um, so here, here you go. So here's our four inch piece. And I divided it up into five sections because, as you can see, in, in this tree here, it's basically we have five sections: one, two, three, four, five, the top, and then you know little little branch sections. I think an, uh, an odd number looks good. So what I did was I I uh, divided again. We're talking about four inches here. So the bottom part where the base is going to be, uh, the little trunk, it'll be you know mark a five eighths inch line there, and then we'll come up seventh seven-eighths of an inch for the last row of branches and then each of the subsequent ones will be about five-eighths and these are basically just to kind of give us an idea of where we need to be we're gonna you know probably some are gonna be like slightly longer and, and slightly shorter so but uh, you know if you want to think in terms of dividing the piece up I figured I'd, I'd, uh, I'd you know get you going in that regard here so there you go I'll give you a look at that again again this is uh, the, the whole piece this this whole block here from here to here is about six inches long I'm just leaving this extra wood down here to hold on to and I suggest you do the same it's it's uh, you know a little more convenient you keep your hands away from from where you're whittling and you have something good to hold on to I also marked a piece uh, a line excuse me all the way across and I took a saw and I just, what I do initially, is I just cut a little bit, uh, just, you know, barely in, maybe, you know, barely an, an eighth of an inch, you know, probably about the distance of the, of the uh, teeth on the saw. And I go in on all four sides. And it just makes it easier when you're separating the piece at the end. It'll give you, you know, you already have a starting point, and it's, it'll be nice and flat for you. So give that a shot as well. Um, so let's talk about knives. Now, if you're just starting out, you may or may not have a whittling knife. Um, and I'm going to give you some recommendations for that. And first off, you can absolutely start out with a dedicated, which I would actually recommend. Go get yourself a dedicated whittling knife. This one happens to be from North Bay Forge, and if you watch my videos, you know I use their knives quite a bit. Uh, they still make quality knives. Or, um, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of uh, a lot of knife makers today. Um, there's not as many as there used to be, it seems. But um, North Bay Forge is one that I use, and I have very good luck with them. So, um, and I'll show you the different knives through the whittle. Another option for you is a, a Stanley 199. Uh, basically a utility knife. Um, now it's not just grab a utility knife and stick a blade in and, and, and go for it. There is a bit of work you need to do to get the blade whittling sharp. And again I do have a video uh, on how I prepare my knife which includes the Stanley 199. You'll have to take down the bevel just a bit and uh, sharpen it uh, so it's so it's whittling sharp and uh, but you can per they're perfectly serviceable uh, for whittling especially for for pieces like this um, so that's an option for you and again I'll have a link there'll be links up here and down in the description to show you the video where I, I prepare uh, different types of knives and how I sharpen and get them ready um, another option that you have are if you're if you're at all um, competent in uh, maybe you're you know you haven't whittled but you like to make knives now here's two options for you here's a knife that I made out of a uh, it's, at, it's an it's an old boning knife actually and I just cut it down I think it was probably maybe 11 inches long I cut it down and uh, sharpened it to you know to get it ready for whittling and um, I just picked this up 
I forget where I picked it up. I've had it for a while, and uh, it's a it's a perfectly great whittling knife. Actually, it works really well. And I'm going to show these knives in operation throughout the video. And then um, here's a knife that uh, one of my viewers, uh, Black Mark or AK Mark, um, had made me. And um, so if you're competent like Mark is at making knives, uh, you can certainly. Uh, make yourself a knife um, and set it in a handle and um, you know you'll be ready to go in that regard so it's a little more involved and not everybody has the skill that Mark has to make a knife but if you do have that skill you know make yourself a knife it's kind of fun to actually use a knife that you made to to do your whittling so if you have that skill by all means but if you're just a beginner you know maybe you don't have that skill quite um, quite yet but um, um, it's something to uh, to consider as well so there you go. There's your options. Again, probably the best recommendation would be, you know, if you're just starting out, um, unless you're fortunate to have someone who makes you a knife like I did, which is a great, and Mark, again, I really appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, go get, grab yourself a dedicated whittling knife. There's plenty of manufacturers. Maybe I'll have some links down in the description as well. And, and if anybody's watching this video who is a, an old time whittler um, and you have some, some knife manufacturers you'd like to recommend, leave them, leave them down below. Um, we'd like to get their names out there so people can uh, can purchase knives from these for, you know from from the people that work hard to make good quality uh, uh, whittling knives. So anyway, I'm going to get everything set up with the piece, and I will be right back. We're back here, and we're going to start. First thing we're going to look at doing. By the way, I'm going to be using uh, the knife that uh, Mark had made, uh, made me. We'll start off with his knife uh, since it is a great knife to use. Um, the, you know, perfect for uh, basswood uh, whittling. And um, what we're basically let, let's consider the, the 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 evergreen tree or Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it. Um, there, it, you know, it tapers from the from the bottom to the top. So our goal is going to be to shape this, round it and shape it into a point. So the this is the easy part of the whittle. You're just basically going to start along the edge and just come in here and start taking your edges down. That's all you're going to do. So you're just going to go from edge to edge. And again, remember this this video is geared towards people who are who are, you know, just getting into this hobby. Um, you know, that's that's what we're that's what we're doing here. Now a key when you're using a knife too is don't just push it straight through like that. Use use the length of the blade. It actually cuts better if you use it and you push it and go through like like so. It actually cuts the wood better if you do that. You know, if you actually are pushing it where it's where it's actually moving along the edge, that's actually a more effective way to to a cut. And these are these are just your your most of this whittle is going to be done using the simple this push cut type of thing. And if the you know as you move your blade, even as you do it like this, you're still you know cut you're moving along that edge over there. So you know keep that in mind. Um, it's a it's a more efficient and effective way of uh, of whittling. So all I'm going to do here is just continue essentially what I'm doing, looking at rounding it with the goal to bring it into the uh, the, the top of it. So what I'll do here is, you know, because it gets, it's anybody can do this. This is this is why this type of whittle is perfect because the all the cuts that you're making are basically, you know, simple and easy to do. You can, you know, you, anyone can anyone can do this. If you've never used a whittling knife before, everyone can do this. You're basically just sharpening the point of <laughs> sharpening a stick into a point, so to speak. You know, uh, you're like a uh, manual pencil sharpener, you know, think of it that way. So I'm going to kind of just um, breeze through this section. You'll probably see me fast forward through most of it here because, again, that's, that's all we're doing. I think anybody can get that down. You don't need to see me do this for the next uh, few minutes. So um, here we go. We'll just be right through it. Okay, I figured I'd jump back in here. Uh, I mentioned this in the last video I did. Here's a, um, when, you're, when you're taking off a lot of wood at one time, here's the way that I do it. I have everything in front of me cleared off. There's nothing in the way. I'm not sitting on top of my knee doing this. I have no one in front of me. Um, I'm holding knife firmly in my, in my hand, and I'm using the strength of my arm to bring it through the wood in a way like this. It, it makes nice, clean cuts, and it uh, removes the wood very, very quickly. So that's uh, what you want to, you know, want, what you want to practice at if you're doing bulk removal like this. And a knife like this is geared towards, you know, bulk removal. Um, so that's that's what you want to that's what you want to kind of do here. And you can see we're beginning to really round this out. 
Another, th another thing that uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but draw center lines. We're going to remove probably most of these, but it helps on the top. Um, you'll be able to kind of gauge uh, the roundness of your piece. And again, since this is an organic shape, it doesn't have to be perfectly round. And you can start with a dowel as well. If you have a dowel, you can go maybe grab yourself a poplar dowel, and you can start with that if, if you choose. But, um, you know, most people just have a piece of, um, you know, a dimensional lumber or basswood or something like that. Um, uh, you can use any type of wood for this wood. We're just using basswood because it is the common wood that most people have for whittling and use for whittling. So, and again, I'm just going to kind of continue what I'm doing here to, to get this down to where I think it needs to be. So, again, we're just sharpening it into somewhat of a point. All right, I'll speed through this and I'll be right back. Basically, um, you're going to get the you know, going to get the, the piece. You can wait to do the the the, the top, bring it to an exact point. Um, you know, towards the end, if, if you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then you're going to basically, like we said, come down. Um, you're going to figure out. We we removed uh, one of our lines over there. You can see, uh, but it's it's right about here. Or so, and uh, what we're going to do here is now is start forming the first layer. So um, let's just. Make a little cut in there to establish where our first layer is going to be. First layer of branches, so to speak. And then we're going to basically just zigzag around. So you're going to come here and you're just going to, as you can see, I made a bit of an angle. And we're going to kind of go up and down around the piece like that. That's all. You can see how we're moving around the piece. Up and down. That's all you want to do. These are great, um, really great first projects to do. I, I think projects like this and uh, of like a mushroom are fantastic uh, projects to do. I, you know, when I was thinking about doing this video, um, I asked my wife, I said, if you were just getting into whittling, well, not that she whittles, but if, if you thought about getting into whittling, what would you, what would you want to do? What would you want to see? And uh, she said, she's not really into like the little figures that are, you know, pretty prevalent, which a lot of people like, I, I, obviously I do a lot of them. Um, but, uh, she said she liked to see, you know, she likes nature and, and uh, she liked, she loved the mushroom and the trees. Um, and uh, she said, I, I think I'd like to, I would try doing a tree and why not? Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're fun to do and they're easy to do. So, and it's a type of whittle. I think that anybody who, who picks up a whittling knife can, can tackle and get decent results out of it. You really can't mess these up. So, um, so there you go. We just went around here. We'll divide this up a little bit more as we go, but let's, uh, let's establish some, uh, some branch sections first. So we're going to do essentially the same thing, uh, before we lose all our lines, uh, we're going to come here another little cut and you can you can make the first cut uh, at an angle or straight or whatever you want to do um, like I said there's the organic so you know take some creative license with it and do it uh, the way you you want to see it try not to keep the pattern exactly the same from branch to branch alter it a little bit so it just looks more natural I think that's a better uh, better way to proceed but again you really you're going to change these quite a bit so um, don't worry if it uh, if it looks repetitive because eventually you can you can add some detail to 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 fix that anyway. So again, we're just zigzagging around here. That, that's that's all. That's why I said these are simple whittles. This this is called basically a stop cut. You're putting your knife in the wood here. You're forming a bit of a stop cut, and then you're cutting up to that stop cut. It helps. The reason that works is because it, it will relieve the wood um, that you're cutting because you already have a, an, an end to it. So, you know, before it starts to tear out, the stop cut will, 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 will basically uh, effectively pop that, that little section that you're cutting out. That's basically how what you're using it for. So you're putting your knife in the wood and then just cutting right up to it, and then it pops out like that. And you're going to go around and do and do that like we did on the upper piece. And then we end it somehow like that. 
And if it doesn't meet up exactly, again, don't worry about it because we'll 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 add some detail that'll 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 change that anyway. We're just basically establishing some some boundaries for ourselves, um, and that's that's all we're doing here. You know, we're probably going to have to bring these these pieces in just a little bit more, uh, but that's okay too because you know the tree can be can be kind of skinny. Um, if you want it to, if you want a tree that flares out quite a bit, like the like the tree I showed you in the beginning, uh, you're going to have to use a you know a little bit bigger piece of wood, but um, you can certainly you can certainly do that. There you go. We sort of have another layer in there. And again, this is the this is just the establishing the the boundaries. We're not finished with those layers, but there you go, another one. So let's do the same thing over here. We're going to start our next layer right here. Go up and down. So what I'll do, again, you, 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 I'm just kind of showing you um, how I do it. There's no, there's no uh, real formula other than to go up and down as you go around the piece. So I won't, uh, you know, I won't, won't bore you with that. I'm sure, I'm sure you'd rather see we, we, uh, me do something. You know, slightly different because uh, I think everyone sees how we how we uh, do that so far. So um, I'll finish uh, doing that up, and I'll be right back. You can see I got the uh, first uh, four rows kind of established here. Pretty uh, pretty easy to do. Let's um, let's start uh, refining it now. Before we do the the last row, uh, let's start bringing these in just a bit. So I'm going to start at the top and just start working to thin this out just a bit. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm just, again, doing the push cuts. And thinning it out. That's all. When I say thinning, I'm just bringing it in on all sides. You know, and you can see you know, that the, we, we're coming right to, the, right to the point on the top over there. So now I'm just coming into the next row. I'm thinning that out a bit as well. I'm not worried about cleaning all that out in there yet. We'll we'll we'll, we'll work on that. This type of whittles um, again good because it you 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 do the same kind of cut over and over again, and you're not wor you, you don't have to worry about form as much as you would on a figure because it's very organic. So you have a lot of leeway to to, uh, you know, sometimes I know people have asked me questions regarding uh, whittles that I've done, you know, how to whittle a face and, and, and the nose, the, and the mouth and the eyes and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I've done videos like that. So uh, people follow along and, um, and uh, I hope it helps. Uh, but sometimes you, you know, you're, you're maybe not exactly geared towards, towards, uh, towards doing little figures and you want to try something different. And uh, again, I think when you're starting out, you can get discouraged if you do a figure because, um, you know the head is an, is can be can be a bit challenging in some respects to do if you're adding lots of detail like the, the mouth and the nose and the eyes it it um, you know it can be a bit overwhelming and and you don't want to get discouraged you'll you'll get to that point where you can do this kind of whittles um, and you'll you'll refine your your own style in doing that which is uh, why you want to practice on on uh, on things like this. Uh, get your get your footing down doing whittles like this because they're they're perfect uh, training ground so to speak for doing more advanced whittles and this will allow you just time to you know slow you down meditate a little bit on what you're doing and uh, pay attention to how you're cutting uh, try different knives out that you may have this is a good opportunity to uh, to uh, give that uh, pull out different knives and see which one you like best you know, if you have, you can do an entire whittle with a with a knife like this. Um, and Mark's knife is is perfectly suited for doing um, for doing uh, whittles like this. So uh, you you can do it. But if you have multiple knives, and if you get into this hobby, you will eventually acquire many knives. Um, you know, try different knives out. It's a perfect opportunity to see how they work, what you like, what you don't like about it, what they're good for, what they're not good for. That's why this is a perfect opportunity. You'll actually come up with something, no matter, no matter how new you are to the hobby, you'll actually, in the end, you'll, you'll come up with something finished that you can, that you can show people. And, um, you know, uh, and even if you don't show people, 
And if you just even have it on your own somewhere on your desk and nobody really sees it except for you, then you know you can look at it and be proud of what you did. So I'm just coming in here and again, I'm just kind of thinning every layer out. I'm taking it slowly. Again, this video is probably going to be a little longer because uh, I am trying to take it slow and gear it, you know, gear it towards people who, who want a, a bit of an understanding of whittling. You can see what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is essentially, I could see this is the, the furthest outward point on the piece of wood. So if I want this branch layer to be recessed a little bit, I'm going to have to cut this back in. But I have to... I have to thin out the sub the layers um, that are you know above it to a point where I can where I can uh, you know have them all taper in so it's not just coming straight up. I mean you could certainly do a piece like that if you wanted to, uh, but I'm trying to bring it where each layer is slightly you know as you go down gets slightly wider until you're right at the the bottom layer which is as wide as it's going to possibly be. So that's all we're doing here. We're just coming through each layer that we've cut and cutting that back, making it just a little bit, recessing it in towards the center just a little bit more. And then we'll go back and we'll add a little bit of detail to it. But let's not add too much detail to our branches right at this point before we get them established in terms of, uh, in terms of their, their uh, overall, uh, I guess you would say, you know, diameter. So you can see we're working towards thinning each each row out so just be you know kind of methodical about it um, doesn't have to be perfect because like I mentioned it's organic so it's going to have some variation and you can see this is basically the furthest point out so we're going to be cutting cutting that back a little bit further we want it to be recessed in we don't want it to stick out as much as the layer that's going to be right below it I just keep refining each 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 row to get them to where I think they need to be and this is going to be just something you develop a feel for but again you know what we're aiming for you know the shape that that it needs to be it's uh, you know it's kind of conical so that's what we're that's what we're doing so anyway I'm going to continue doing that on these layers here and then when I'm ready to get to this bottom layer I'll come on back okay you see I went around and kind of tapered it in a bit Take um, a straight edge, I'm just, I just grab the uh, little saw that I have, and put it on the side over here. And then you can see, you can gauge you know, how they taper in. It's a, it's a good eyeball thing uh, to, to use. So you can kind of see, we're, we're pretty good. Um, all of them taper in slightly, and, and we'll, we're going to go refining these a bit more. So, uh, But that's just it. Get your straight edge, put it right, right against the side, and, and see how they taper if you want to use that as a, as a means of establishing that. Uh, type of thing. And the last row, we're essentially going to do pretty much what we've been doing all along. We're just going to come around here and just go up and down. There's really no different to it, no difference to it. Just going to, we're going to have to deepen the part underneath it a little bit more. That's all. That's the only difference um, we'll work towards. But again, I'm just going to go right around here and Taper them up and down. Now what I do on the bottom here is I just start working my way around and I want to get it as deep as possible underneath it. Not, not too much. I just kind of work my way around that, that last row and I just deepen it as much as I can. I don't like to do the finished detail on the branch. This is why I, I leave the, the finishing detail to the end because you're going to come back in here and you're, you're hitting against the, the, the branch layer that you did before. And if you cut all these and add some little detail in here, if you're doing the layer below it, you might chip it out. So save that, uh, save that detail work right to the end. You know, Consider this just a rough out stage and that's what you're working towards. I'm just going to kind of round it out a bit. And all I'm doing when I say round it out, I'm just coming up, I'm taking down the edge a bit. And then I just kind of come back in here and I keep working my way inward. So you're going to want to come underneath that last row of branches and deepen it. That's all you're, that's all you're looking to do here. Just take your time. 
and get get up in to this this area over here. So go around and and you can start from the from the bottom and work your way up. Just like any hobby that you do, you know, take your time. Um, enjoy the process. Don't uh, don't rush through it. If you rush, and another thing I would recommend, because here, since we're talking to beginners here, a lot of people have asked over time, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but a number of people over the years have asked me about whittling the safety and gloves and, and what have you, and some people and you know don't understand why, why I don't use a whittling glove. Um, and if you're a beginner, by all means, go, go grab yourself. A, that should be maybe one of the purchases you make. Is a, Just because you see me and maybe a few other whittlers on YouTube not using a glove doesn't mean... Um, doesn't mean you should not use a glove. Um, if you're just if you're just getting into the hobby, it, it may it, it may offer that that layer of uh, of protection that uh, that makes you feel more comfortable. And you should feel comfortable while you're doing this. Um, when I first started, I used the I used the uh, many years ago. Uh, I've been doing this for probably uh, I don't know, 25 years or so. And when I first started out, I I used a um, I used a woodland glove. I still have uh, a couple laying around, um, and uh, over the years, I just found that um, I, you know I, I um, it, I'm more comfortable whittling like this. I feel like I have slightly better control over the piece I'm holding, um, and um, and that, that's that's it. That's really the only reason. By all means, grab yourself a whittling glove, but also it, safety starts with just being aware. Of where your knife is going and where your where you, you know the, your hand is in terms of the knife. Sometimes you do have to cut in the direction. You always want to try to cut away from you if you can. Sometimes though you're in a situation where you have no choice and you have to cut you know towards you. You want to make sure that you have enough wood in the way or you have enough control over the knife where it's not going to slip and go into your hand. Um, honestly, the and I've said this before in videos, the the times I've cut myself and the and the um, the, uh, the you know the, the sort of the, the problems that I've had have not been during whittling as much as they as much as I've uh, had them um, sharpening a knife or putting a knife away or grabbing a knife incorrectly. You know, I, I have it down on the desk and I grab it, you know, not thinking or I, I run my hand and I and I and I hit the edge and I cut myself. So uh, yeah, just just uh, just you know, don't look at the glove as the be all and end all for safety. You still pay attention to where the knife is. Or where it's going, I should say, and where it is. Um, so there you go. We sort of have a, have gotten to the um, the rough out part here. You can see it. We're looking more and more like a, a little little evergreen tree. But I'm going to finish uh, first. I'm going to kind of come in here and and work on getting this just a bit deeper in here. So again, all I'm doing is just coming in here and thinning it out. You know, we want to make it look like it's sort of you know, it may be sitting in, there's some snow or some dirt that it's growing out of, you know, the, that's all. And give it enough of a, of a base so it can sit comfortably on a, on a shelf. Uh, you know, don't, don't go too thin down here because, you know, that's, you, you don't need to make it that thin. And it might, uh, it might snap off on you if you, if you go too far. So, you know, keep that in mind. Don't, don't go too, too thin, but just, you know, get in there. And uh, you can kind of see from the side over here how deep that is. So, um, and the way to do this is just, again, you're going to have to just take piece by piece. You're not going to get it all in one shot. You know, get your knife in there, come back and, and chip it out or, or do it the other way. Do your little stop cut in there and then come in and chip it out. That's all. You know, flip it around however you need to get to it and just deepen it just a bit more. Yeah, sometimes if you do it when you're looking down at it like this, you can kind of see where you're at, and and um, that works a little bit better. I think at this point, we can start considering how we want to handle the detail uh, portion of this. And again, I, when I say detail, we're not it's not like we're adding individual pine needles and... and and pine cones and, and everything like that. We're not doing that. We're just adding a little bit of variation to the to the branch sections. Um, I'm going to just 
kind of round out this base just a bit more. So I can have that ready. So when I'm ready to cut it, it'll it'll just you know be all be all set. So I just kind of come around here, and if it helps, you know, take down the take down the edges of the the section of wood below. I probably should have done that to start because it makes it a little more comfortable to hold. I find that if you're you know grabbing onto a piece that's got these sharper edges, it, it's just a little a little uncomfortable. But um, I didn't do it. Now I'm remembering to do that. So. Uh, but you can now it's it's a lot more comfortable to hold and when you're coming up rounding it off You're going to need those edges down anyway. Now. Let's try a different knife uh, uh, Mark's knife has served us well so far and uh, like I said you could you could continue and, and finish the entire whittle with with a knife like this but um, you know for those people who are interested and I you know again my channel is geared towards towards uh, all peeps, you know, all different skill levels. And I like to show different knives and different wood and everything else. So let's pull out another knife. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. We'll, we'll give the old Stanley 199 a, uh, a shot at it. And again, like I said, you know, uh, this isn't a blade that's straight out of the, uh, the packaging. Um, I, I work them a little bit. I sharpen them up a bit. I, I take down the bevel that they come with uh, to, to, uh, to get that down to make it uh, better for whittling. But uh, once you do that, they can be pretty serviceable. Um, there's a few people who use these almost exclusively and um, they you know, do, do some really amazing work with them. Um, it's not a, bad little, not a bad little instrument to have in your arsenal. So now what I'm doing is getting to the refining phase. I'm going to start cleaning up some of these edges a bit. I'm going to start deepening some areas that I think need to be need to be deepened. You know, just get it to the your, get it to the level of of uh, finish that, or I shouldn't say finish, but get it to the shape that you know when you look at it. Does it does it look like a Christmas tree to you, or or an evergreen tree, or whatever you're making here? Uh, if it doesn't, then you know play around with it until it does. I mean, I think it's it's looking pretty decent here. You know, can these can these sections be a little bit uh, smaller down here? Probably. But again, just, just gonna go around. If you want the if you want the, the, the layers, you know, above the whatever one you have to be slightly recessed more, then then just bring it down. You see I'm coming right to the end there and I'm just knocking off some wood. It'll recess it in just a little bit further and it'll make it look more like it's you know more tapered. That's all. There you go. We're getting there. And I, you know, I, I'm sorry if this seems like it's really drawn out. Uh, again, I just want to emphasize, I'm kind of trying to gear this towards uh, people really who want to get into this this hobby. And I'm really trying to encourage people to do that. Now, what we can start thinking about is adding just maybe a slight variation to the to the branch level. So what I like to do is I kind of come in here and I start to just put little notches in, like so. You kind of see that. And I just go around and I look to see where where they where they should be and I put little just little variations in there. I might notch the bottom of the one I just made out a little bit more so it doesn't you know looks like kind of maybe tucks under. And then maybe I'll go over here and I'll do the same thing. Maybe I'll come up here and I'll put another little notch in there. It just adds a little bit of variation to the uh, to each level. And do you need to do that? No, you actually, you really don't. You can you can get away with just with just adding surface uh, texture, texturing and facets to each layer, and call it good. That's 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 plenty fine too. But I kind of like to add that little bit of little bit of detail. You know, maybe um, come in the opposite direction. Put a little notch in there. And you can kind of see. I think it just adds just the right amount of of. Uh, of detail and it gives you a practice doing a little bit excuse me I'm out of the camera here um, gives you a little practice just working on working on different types of cuts and 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 add a little bit of artistic expression to your pieces you know because um, that's always a fine thing to do and I think anytime you add a little bit of detail um, it, it helps it helps uh, uh, it just makes your piece come together you know, people like it. 
you'll like it and it's just fun to do you can see you know see what you can come up with and uh, see what kind of detail um, you want to add or or you feel is essential and, and just work with it you kind of say that's all that's how simple that is You're just going to come in here sometimes I like where where the pieces kind of come up you know the little branch sections come up maybe put it kind of in there because it's naturally flowing that way from when we cut it initially and that's all and like I said I come back underneath here and I just notch out the bottom a little bit just to separate the the, uh, the, the two sections just a little bit more that's all so you can see it's really not that hard to do you can kind of see where we're, we're doing uh, we're doing our little branch sections over here, and, and I'm just going to keep going around and doing that on every level at this point. So, um, and then we'll come back and I'll show you just a bit of, of cleanup, and then um, that will should take care of it. But uh, there you go. We're adding some just a little bit of detail to our piece, and I'll go around and I'll, I'll finish up doing essentially all I've been doing here. Like I said, I'm just cutting out, and I come in here on the, on the side, and I cut out a section, maybe come back notch it out right in there you kind of see how that that separates that branch level just a little bit more and that, that's how simple it is it really um, again these are really really quite simple to do so I'm going to finish with that and I'll be right back I just wanted to talk briefly about the other most important thing um, that you're going to need to get I'm going to pull out just um, well uh, we'll switch knives again, just again, so you can you can see different knives in use. Uh, this is the North Bay Forge knife I talked about, um, and again, I'll have links in the description and everything for all these kind of things. But an important thing as you're as you're whittling, um, it's very easy to just get absorbed into the into the whittle and forget you know the most important thing uh, in this hobby. The the number one rule is to keep this thing over here as sharp as possible so what I like to do and again this is not a video necessarily on on sharpening or or stropping or whatever the case may be uh, I'll have those links over there so you can see how I do it um, but stop periodically pull out your strop and run it across the blade no matter how you do it I happen to do it this way where I take a piece of wood where I have a couple pieces of leather mount it I use some honing compound um, typically you can find uh, this type of this green honing compound you'll you'll apply the, a little bit of that to your strop and the way I do it is I just basically do it with the with the the edge that I'm stropping facing me and I take my strop and I just I secure it on my leg the knife on my leg and I just take my strop and I run it across the blade periodically I do this as I as I'm whittling I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing on this side You want to do that, it'll keep the edge as, as sharp and whittling, uh, uh, you know, uh, appropriate as possible. The other uh, way of, of approaching this is the traditional method that most people, um, I don't really use this method all that often anymore, but you'll, you'll get um, a piece of wood, mount your piece of leather on that wood, and then drag your knife away from the cutting edge you don't don't go in the, the direction of the cutting edge when you're stropping you can do it when you're sharpening but not when you're stropping you you drag it away from the cutting edge you're going to do it on that side you're going to want to flatten and make sure the knife is flat on the uh the you know that bevels right on that right on that strop and just run it across it a few times you know maybe 10 to 20 times on each side and flip it over uh, and, and do it that way and periodically you know as you're whittling how often do you do it well, it's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on the knife, how well it stays sharp. Um, certain knives are going to require uh, stropping more frequently. Um, this North Bay Forge knife um, doesn't. It's, it, it holds its edge really well. Um, some of my pocket knives, uh, i got to strop those pretty regularly. Um, some the uh, the Stanley, that needs to be stropped a little bit more regularly. Uh, they don't hold the edge well. They're not really designed well. De definitely, the standing is not really designed to be a whittling knife. Um, but um, you know, periodically you'll st sort of begin to feel that the, it's not, you know, it's not cutting. Sometimes people say that if you um, cut across the end grain like that and it's clean, there's not a lot of scratches in here. 
then the knife's pretty good. It's ready to go. I, I mean, there's all different ways. So, you know, people say you run it across your fingernail, you cut, you cut the hair on your arm, you cut a piece of paper, whatever. To me, I, I, I tend to say I'm using it for whittling. Uh, I test it out in wood and see how, see how well it works. If it seems like it's not, and not doing the job, then I, then I stop and I, and I strop it. You're only really, if you get a knife like this, you're not going to have to sharpen it. Um, this one I modified slightly, so I did wind up sharpening, but um, um, you're not going to have to sharpen it right off the get-go. They're, they're ready to go. And you just keep them maintained by stropping it. That's all. Periodically, you know, you might have to sharpen it if you, if you change the profile on your blade or um, you, uh, you drop it. If you drop it and chip the blade, then you're going to have to, you're going to have to put it and, and, and resharpen the blade. So, uh, but uh, that's why I recommend getting a if you get a knife like this from one of the manufacturers, they come ready to go. Uh, you can read their description of the thing. If they if they say their knives are ready to go, they're coming ready to go. They're gonna you're gonna be able to pull them out and start whittling. You'll know what whittling sharp is if you have one of those knives. If you pull a pocket knife out or a Stanley, um, you, they might they're not gonna be typically ready to ready to whittle with. So you're gonna have to do some work to them. Um, but anyway, that's uh, just briefly in the knife. The way I've just been adding detail, like I, I take bigger sections of branches, like let's say if you look at it from this angle, like this branch over here, this section, you could leave it like that, but you know, let's say you want to break it in. Just, just again, put a little notch in there. And just, that's all I'm doing when I do these type of things. I just put a notch in there and I just open it up a little bit. So it looks, it just adds a little variety. You can kind of carry that cut up if you want on one side. Typically, what I'll do is I'll come back underneath, and I'll, and I'll just act, and I'll just try to separate the branches as much as possible, just to make them look like they're, you know, a little more, more variation. And it just kind of breaks up the piece a little bit more and adds just an, just enough variation, um, for two reasons. One, it's that's the way trees do grow, and if you do make a mistake, it hides your mistakes a little, <laughs> a little bit more as well. Um, you know, do it to do it to the level that you feel is appropriate. And, um, and, and that's really all that's, that's, that's kind of the whole gist of this, this whittle over here. Um, you know, you can go back up and if you want to start, um, you know, you can leave it like that. Uh, I typically will go back in and when I'm, when I'm, when I'm uh, all done and I'll go in here, any little area where I'm undercutting, you know, if it's, if the wood looks a little rough, if it's broken out, I'll come back in here and I'll just, I'll just clean it up. You know, I'll take my time and I'll just come back there and, and pull out and clean up that wood a little bit. You know, if I see something here that doesn't look, that looks a little rough, uh, the finish is a little rough or it's chipped out, whatever. You know, I'll just come back in here. This is the time where I start just go around and clean things up. Again, enjoy this, enjoy the process of whittling. Don't rush. We're not in a competition here. Um, you know, it's not like I whittled this piece in, in 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. You, I guess you, you could rush through a whittle, but I don't really see the point in doing that. Um, uh, I would rather enjoy the process. What I typically do uh, too on the other on the other on the underside of each branch is I kind of undercut it a bit. So I come back in here and I'll kind of start taking little cuts. So it's basically, if you can kind of see in here, I'm coming underneath and I'm sort of just cutting it upward a little bit and it's more of a scooping cut it's going to kind of be hard kind of it's hard to show you in this uh, in this angle but i'm kind of coming up you see the orientation of my blade with respect to the piece and i'm just kind of uh, it's undercutting it it'll just make it i don't know creates a better shadowing i think on there and it'll just look a little bit better for the base what i typically do is i want to come in here around the edge and i'll kind of Bring my knife with a bit of a scooping cut. So I'm coming in here and I'm just kind of rolling my knife up a little bit. I'm doing that. I'm just kind of coming around the edge here and I'm just rolling it up a little bit. That's all. I think it just, it'll look more like uh, ground if you do that. These are just, I'm kind of just showing you different things you can do. You can choose not to do these. You don't even have to put a base on it if you don't want to like this. That's it. So then when I come in here, what I like to do to finish up a piece 
is once I get done putting any kind of detail that I want, like if I see branches, like I mentioned, if I see branches that maybe I want to put a little notch in there just to kind of break it up a little bit more, I might come back and add that. I don't know. You, you know, put to, again, put whatever detail you want in there um, and uh, do it to your heart's content. And then I come back in here and I start to clean up the edges and I'll roll my knife around. I'll go from piece to piece. This will add a little more facets in there. So when you paint, like I mentioned with the dry brush, it'll pick up some of these facets. And I just kind of come in here and I roll it up. I just roll my knife around. And you can kind of see we're adding a bit of, I'm sorry if I was out of camera there. We're adding a bit of uh, little textures to the uh, little facets, excuse me. I keep saying textures. And these will look a lot nicer once you once you paint it up. The more you put in there, the nicer it's going to look. So take your time. And just go through. Relax. Do these type of little cuts here and there. And it'll also give you an opportunity. You'll come in here and you can see places that need a little cleanup. And you can go back and kind of do that as well. This is a this is a project where I think anyone, if you're if you literally are are been thinking about getting into this hobby, take this as an opportunity. Take this holiday season, this new year as an opportunity to start start your journey into uh, this type of this type of hobby. Uh, it's fun. It's rewarding. It's uh, um, I've had I've been very fortunate on YouTube. The people that I've uh, that watch my channels, the viewers have been very kind and generous, um, and uh, it's it's a pleasure uh, uh, doing putting these videos out. I mean, if people appreciate them, I, I really do. That makes it all the more worthwhile. Then, and also you get generosity. I've had people send me photos of their their uh, whittles. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, my viewer uh, Mark had sent me the knife and some wood earlier this year, um, and you know, I can't. Uh, thank people like that enough for what they do um, and hopefully I respond by by continuing to put videos out that everyone can enjoy the last thing you want to do on these whittles is just what I'm doing here I'm adding little uh, kind of scooping cuts I come in here any you know if you see a frayed edge or something just just scoop up go along your edge of all your little branches and just kind of scoop up some wood. Go along the, the bottom of all the branches especially. And just add these little scooping cuts. I think that just brings it all together. Makes it look good. At least I think so. And it cleans up some of the uh, some of your edges if they if they look a little uh, jagged. It'll it'll smooth those out as well. So that's all. All right, I don't really think there's much else uh, you need to see on this piece. I'm pretty sure we have it all done. What I'll do is uh, just uh, finish this little cleanup phase. And um, before I paint it, I'll give you a look at that. And then I'll give you another look when it's all painted. All righty, I'll be right back. That's really about it. It's, they're not difficult to do. They do take time. It's a great beginner's project because um, uh, it's very organic in shape. You don't have to worry about you know, uh, particular details. You can, um, you know, I kept going. In fact, a couple of little pieces broke off as I was doing it. Well, you know what? I just rewhittled it. It's, it's the kind of thing where that's why, I, that's why I said this is really great for someone just getting into the hobby. It, it really, you can't go wrong. You can't mess it up. And in the end, you get a little, you get a little evergreen tree that if you want, um, you can, you can add little, like I said, little dots of color all over it to make it look like a Christmas tree, if that's if that's uh, what you would uh, like as well. So it gives you gives you some uh, gives you a little project to do here as a beginner, as a starting project. I would definitely recommend it. it takes a little time to do, but um, it's um, it, it's a it's really good it's a really good starter project to get into this hobby. Get yourself a knife, get yourself a piece of uh, basswood, uh, or you know different types of wood you can use as well and give it a give it a shot let me know what you think in the comments and if you like it if you don't like it uh, that's fine let me know uh, but that's about it i'll uh, paint it up and uh, spin it around on the uh, little little uh, carousel thing for you so anyway that takes uh, that takes care of it for me i hope you all have a great whittling week i'll talk to you again soon take care